Now, it's no secret that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was, well, a bit of a clusterfuck. An overstuffed, inconsistent, tonally confused mess of a script that turned one of the coolest and smartest characters in the MCU into a clueless idiot who's basically a glorified extra in his own movie, turned a remorseful and partially reformed Wanza into an overnight psychotic villain with the most ridiculous motivations imaginable, and generally gave every character in the film an IQ score in the low double digits. Now, you could spend hours going over all the problems, inconsistencies and failings of the script, but for the purposes of this video, let's keep it short and sweet. The main issues with Multiverse of Madness for most people were as follows. 1. Wanda's motivation doesn't make any fucking sense. She wants access to the multiverse so that she can steal another Wanda's children and claim them for her own. Never mind that there's probably millions of realities out there where the children are alive but Wanda isn't so she could easily slip into them with no problem. Number 2. Strange is a complete idiot. He consistently makes terrible decisions, fails to understand obvious dangers and generally gets treated like an annoying side character for most of the film, and every other version of Strange that gets presented to us is shown to be either wrong or deplorable or just straight up evil in some way. 3. Everyone else in the film is stupid too. Whether it's the lame defences of Kamataj, the Illuminati falling down like dominoes, or supposedly intelligent characters giving away vital information when they've got no reason to, it all adds up to a cast of characters that are dumber than a TikTok seminar. 4. America Chavez makes no sense. She's basically a walking MacGuffin that needs to either be protected or fought over, with a dumb backstory and powers that come and go whenever the plot needs them to. And 5. The world building makes no sense either. Combining two very complex systems of magic and multiversal travel is no easy feat at the best of times, and the script tries to introduce so many mechanics and conflicting rules that it all just blends together into an incoherent mess where anything can happen at any moment. Okay, so how do we go about fixing this? Well, as usual, I'm going to stick to my drinker fixes rules, which basically means that I can't just rewrite the entire movie and tell a whole new story, much as I'd like to. Instead, I have to adhere to the same basic setup, characters and plotline of the original, but tweak and alter it in such a way that it functions better than before. So my main focus here is going to be on redeveloping Wanda's character and decisions so they make more sense and are more in keeping with what we know about her already, bringing strange front and centre into the narrative since it's his movie and it's supposed to be his story. Reworking the world building so there's at least some basic rules about what can and can't happen and giving the antagonist more understandable motivations. Ready? Good, let's get started. So unlike the goofy battle with Defender Strange that started the previous movie, this revised version picks up with Wanda who's now in hiding from the US government after the events at Westview. She's got the Darkhold in her possession and as much as she's reluctant to use it, she's begun to explore its power, looking for a way to reunite with Vision and have the peaceful, loving life that she always dreamed of. But just as she's given a glimpse of another reality in which that Wanda is a mother to two young children, she's suddenly confronted by Doctor Strange, who's managed to track her down here. He's been searching for her ever since the events of WandaVision, knowing how dangerous she could become if left unattended, and he wants to take her into protective custody. Naturally, Wanda refuses to go with him and a fight breaks out between them, with Strange trying to capture her and Wanda using increasingly powerful magic to fend him off. Eventually though, Wong is able to intervene and separate Wanda from the Darkhold, finally prompting her to surrender. With Wanda in custody, Strange takes her and the book to Kamataj for safekeeping, where they'll both be kept under heavy guard. His intention is to keep her safely contained until he can find a way to break the book's hold on her and be relatively confident that she can return to civilization. With the situation now more or less in hand, Strange attends Christine's wedding and reflects on the road not taken, wondering how things might have played out differently if he'd made better decisions in his life. But just as he does so, they're suddenly interrupted by the arrival of America Chavez, who seeks out Strange and begs him for help. But before she can explain herself more, a giant demon attacks her, forcing Wong and Strange to battle it. When they eventually manage to defeat it, America explains that she has the power to travel through the multiverse and that an unknown entity is trying to capture her. Although he can't appear physically, he can summon interdimensional monsters like the one they just fought to try and capture her. America's control of her powers are fairly limited, she can travel to universes that she's already been to, but any new realities are basically a giant gamble. It might be safe or she might get instantly killed, which is why she's quite reluctant to use her powers. The Doctor Strange from the previous 
previous universe tried to help her and was apparently close to finding a solution before suddenly abandoning his research. And before she could find out why, another demon suddenly appeared and killed him. Her only hope now is that R Strange can somehow finish what his counterpart started. Realising that he needs to keep America safe, Strange takes her to Kamataj to decide his next move. Meanwhile, in her holding cell, Wanda begins to feel the psychic influence of the Darkhold communicating with her, corrupting her mind once again and telling her to break free. As Strange and the others are busy coming up with a new plan, Kamataj suddenly comes under attack by an army of demons. At first the defences are able to hold them at bay, until Wanda uses her psychic powers to get inside the heads of the defenders, weakening the barrier until it collapses and the demons are able to break inside. With the demons overrunning the entire fortress, America has no choice but to open a portal to the previous universe, giving them a temporary reprieve. Meanwhile, in the confusion, Wanda is able to break free of her prison and recover the Darkhold, allowing her to communicate directly with the man behind all of this, who turns out to be Evil Doctor Strange. Evil Strange wants to enlist her help to capture America, since the demons alone apparently aren't enough, and only Wanda is capable of dreamwalking into other universes. He explains that America's life is a necessary sacrifice to save the universe that he comes from, and that Wanda of all people should understand what it means to sacrifice things for the greater goods. In return for her help, he'll transport her to a universe where her children and Vision are alive and well, and she can be with them for the rest of her life. Wanda reluctantly accepts his offer and uses the Darkhold to dreamwalk into the universe where Strange and America have retreated. Meanwhile, the two of them make their way to the Illuminati to explain their predicament. The Illuminati are understandably suspicious of him, but reluctantly agree that they have to help. They explain that their Strange had been searching for the Book of Vishanti, the only power in the multiverse capable of defeating any enemy, but suddenly he changed his mind at the last minute and decided that it couldn't be done. Clearly he was trying to hide something, but they're still not sure entirely what. They assign Christine to help Strange find the book, and he's surprised to learn that she was happily married to this universe's Strange and is still mourning his loss. Once again, he questions the decisions he's made in his own life, wondering if he took the wrong path. Still, he gets to work and learns that his counterpart in this universe had been working on a spell that would harness America's power to open a portal to the Gap Junction and recover the Book of Vishanti. All he needs to do is complete the spell and they can get to the book. But at this point, Wanda shows up and forces her way inside the Illuminati headquarters, initially trying to reason with Strange and the others to give up America and avoid unnecessary casualties. Strange begs her to stand down, reminding her that she's a good person, but she refuses and a fight breaks out with Wanda Wanda using all the power of the Darkhold to protect herself. The more the Illuminati attack her, the more it fuels her anger and increases her power, and one by one she defeats them, getting closer and closer to her objective. However, their sacrifice buys enough time for Strange to complete the spell and open a portal to the Book of Vishanti. But before he can take it, Wanda arrives and subdues them all with her magic, before claiming the book for herself and using its power to transport all of them to a new universe, which turns out to be a devastated planet Earth devoid of all life. The only building that's still standing is the Sanctum Sanctorum, and it's here that evil Doctor Strange is waiting for them. Evil Strange explains that in his reality, the Avengers tried and failed to defeat Thanos, and as punishment, he destroyed all life on Earth, including Christine. Only Strange was able to survive inside the Sanctum, and ever since then he's been looking for a way to restore his world, eventually turning to the Darkhold in his desperation. Although the book corrupted his mind, it also gave him insight into the Book of Vish Shanti, which could only be reached using America's power. His whole plan has been to manipulate Strange into recovering the book for him, and when the previous version of Strange realised the danger and tried to alter his plan, evil Strange had him killed, knowing that America would eventually seek out another version in another universe. Now that he has the combined power of both books at his disposal, he can go back and change the past as he sees fit, rebuild his world and bring Christine back to life. The only loose ends to tie up are his counterparts in the other multiverses, which he intends to destroy to prevent any of them from interfering with him again. As he begins drawing on the book's power, rapidly reshaping the world outside the Sanctum, good Doctor Strange tries to stop him, only for Evil Strange to easily deflect his magic. With the combined power of both books, he's an almost unstoppable force at this point. Good Strange tries to warn him of the devastating consequences of tampering with reality on a multiversal scale, but Evil Strange Strange counters that he's a surgeon who spent his whole life holding the knife, making the difficult choices, and that every single Strange would do exactly the same thing in his position. 
This causes Good Strange to question himself and whether he might actually be wrong. But as this is all happening, America uses her power to portal in other Doctor Stranges from other universes who quickly take up the fight against Evil Strange, proving the point that Stephen Strange is a fundamentally good man across almost every reality. And although they manage to slow him down and injure Evil Strange, there's still not enough to stop him. With the battle hanging by a thread, Wanda suddenly steps in and tells Evil Strange that he has to stop, that she understands his pain and grief, but that what he's doing is wrong, a lesson she herself learned after Westview. In response, Evil Strange opens a portal to another universe, allowing her to see the children that she so desperately wants, and telling her it can all be hers if she just lets him complete his work. Wanda looks at Good Strange and apologises to him, and seems poised to take up the offer, before suddenly unleashing her full Scarlet Witch power on Evil Strange, breaking his defences, and allowing Good Strange a brief opening to destroy the Book of Vishanti. The spell is broken, and the sanctum around them begins to collapse as the magic holding it together weakens. As the other Doctor Stranges evacuate back to their own universes, Wanda volunteers to stay behind and hold Evil Strange at bay long enough for them to escape, telling Evil Strange that even if she She'd taken his offer, it would never have been truly real because it wasn't her life to live. But she's at least grateful to know that in some other reality, she got to be happy. She hopes that good Doctor Strange can forgive her for what she's done. As she says her last goodbyes, America opens a portal back to the original universe and they all escape before the sanctum collapses, killing Wanda and Evil Strange in the process. Back in his own reality, Strange mourns the death of Wanda and questions what it means to have seen so many different versions of himself, and whether he's made the right decisions in his own life. His friend Wong counters that there's no such thing as right or wrong decisions, they're simply doing your best with the choices you have, even if it means sacrificing your own happiness. And there you have it, my little attempt to fix the multiverse of madness. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that it's perfect or anything, and it would really be better to start from scratch if you wanted a properly constructed story, but I think this version at least balances out the characters and themes that the script tried to explore. Instead of being a Scarlet Witch movie in all but name, with occasional guest appearances from Doctor Strange, my version shifts the narrative focus back to Strange where it belongs, and the questions around what kind of man he really is, while also giving Wanda a more understandable character arc that doesn't just turn her into an instant villain with questionable motives because it's convenient to the plot. The Wanda in my version is a much more conflicted character trying to redeem herself after the events of WandaVision before getting manipulated and pulled down a dark path, only to finally realise the error of her ways and sacrifice herself for her friends. I still don't love the Book of Vishanti, which feels like a total deus ex machina, or America Chavez, who always seemed like more of a plot device than an actual person, but I've done my best to incorporate both of them into the story in a way that at least makes some kind of sense. Not to mention having the Illuminati act more like logical humans than ridiculous cartoon characters. Like I say, it doesn't fix every problem, but it at least shows you how some relatively small changes can result in big improvements, and it gives you an idea of what this movie could have been in the hands of more capable writers. Something that's in very short supply at Marvel these days. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.